Okay. So. Uh, today's uh, lecture is a review as uh, promised, uh, and I will review the functions in C++. And maybe the, the main topic will be about uh, call by value and call by reference, but we would like to remember uh, the functions. Uh, first, uh, what are functions? Functions are a uh, group of statements that uh, can be executed. Not just a group of statements, but a group of statements that is executed. And we have uh, two types uh, of functions, uh, internal functions and external functions. Internal functions or user-defined. What does user-defined mean? You, the programmer, are uh, uh, writing those functions. And the external functions are already written for you, and you just have to use the functions. What, what does using the function mean? It means you are going to call those functions. So basically, uh, in, uh, in external functions like those ones, uh, they exist in libraries. They are grouped in libraries. And how do you call the library using the include preprocessor, right? For example, if you include the math library, the math library contains a lot of functions, uh, external functions or predefined functions. Now, for example, like the square root function. So if you'd like to compute the square root of uh, two, how, how do you do this? You only have to uh, declare a float or a double x, for example, and then write x equals uh, square root uh, 2. This calls the function square root. But you did not write the function square root. Someone else wrote that function for you, and it is included in the library math. So those functions, even though you didn't know about functions, are already uh, written for you. And some other function, like the iostream, for example, we have seen iostream. What does iostream contain? iostream contains like the, the C in, the C out, and so on. For example, we have the string library. The string library contains functions that handle strings, uh, finding a substring inside a string, combining two uh, strings together, and so on. But our main uh, interest is in user-defined functions. You will be writing the, the functions. So maybe in uh, CE100, we didn't know anything about functions. So you will write all the statements in the main program. Everything is included in the main program. Right? So uh, in the past, this was the only approach for programming. <coughs> and uh, they used to call it the spaghetti programming. Why? Because it is mixed together. If I ask you where is the end of this spaghetti string, you have to pull it to find the end. They're all mixed together. So the problem with this, if you have, for example, a mistake or an error in this statement, how do you find it? You have to go through the whole program and check where is the mistake. So th this is why they came up with the modular programming. Uh, modular programming you split your program into groups of statements. Each group of statements can be, for example, a function. And then, in that case, your program uh, is easier to manage. <coughs> for example, uh, when you are going to call those functions, you find that you have a problem with function number two, so you don't have to look throughout the whole program. No, you only go to function number two and check where is the problem here. So it is easier to debug. It is easier to find the errors, the mistakes in your program. This is one of the things. It is easier to read your program. When you read this program, you know that it performs two main functions. You, you don't have to uh, know about the details. If you would like to know about the details, then you can look at the detail 
of a specific function. But if you have uh, one main program that has all the statements together, you cannot understand what this is doing because it mixes the details with the big idea. And here, you know the big picture, you know the main idea. If you would like to understand the details of one or two parts, then you look at the details of the function. Our programs are easier uh, to understand, they are easier to debug, and uh, you can reuse the same code multiple times. For example, in the spaghetti approach, if you write uh, like this, all the statements together, and you'd like to repeat those statements, then you have to copy-paste, and it becomes more difficult to read and understand. Maybe by mistake, you copy only the four statements instead of the five, so it becomes even more difficult source of problems. Uh, but here, if you'd like to use the function two again, and then you just call function two again. It already contains uh, your code. So it becomes uh, easier to reuse your code. A moment, uh, the modular programming now is part of the history. And very few people are using modular programming, but the, this was maybe the main uh, topic of uh, CS uh, 101. And in CS 112, we are going to learn uh, one more uh, modern, yeah, modern now, yeah, in the 70s, the 80s, uh, approach for programming, which is uh, object-oriented programming. So the, the topic of this course is object-oriented programming. So th this is an introduction about the, the course. Uh, let's remember how uh, we write uh, functions. So th this is how you would write uh, a function. A uh, function is a group of statements. Here is the group of statements. We call it the body of the function. We call it the function body. Gamil? Uh -huh. uh, how do you execute uh, those statements? You must call the function. To be able to call the function, the function must have a name. And everyone should have a different name. So I'll put the function name. Uh, how do you know this is a function, not a variable? Uh, variables also. Ayo, ayo, brackets. Ma, fish, ma fish haya. Yani, fi haya taban, but not in the, not in the, not in the Because there, there are those uh, parentheses. Alas. Yeah, by parentheses. Uh, makes the compiler understand the difference between a variable and a function. Order. The purpose of the parentheses is to uh, include uh, parameters. Even if you don't have uh, parameters, you leave it empty. You don't put any parameters here, but you keep the parentheses so that the compiler un understand this is a function, not a variable. Why do we need parameters? Because a function is like a black box. This is the function circle. It takes input. You remember CE 100? And it does the processing inside the function. And you take the output outside. So th this is how it works. Type. Where, where does the processing happen? The processing happens in the body of the function. Where is the input? Where is the input? It is written as the sequence of parameters. And where is the output? We write the output type, the return type here. Okay, so we have input, processing, and output. <coughs> For the input, uh, we are going to write two things. The type of the input and the name of the input. So this is the type. So here we have a variable, r. So this is the name of the variable. And the type is float. And we need to specify the name. Yagib tahdid al ism. But for the return, we only need to specify the type only, but not the name. A float or double, both are going to work. 
uh, double has more precision than float but they are both the same خلاص both are a'dad uh, ashariya uh, kasriya but the double has more precision a'dad ashariya akthar yani ba'd al-alam al-ashariya but my question was here in the parameters in the input we have to specify the name the name of the input is r but for the output we don't have to specify the name only the type uh, had the fucker from do you know why is it so <coughs> because inside the function we are going to use the r so we must tell the function what is the name of the input because we are going to use it here but do we use the output inside the function no where is the uh, where does the output go it goes to the main it goes to the calling function so it goes to the main so we don't need it here so we don't need to put the name of the output here just the type type el kalam da jadid shofna qabla kada so we have seen this before and uh, now we have just defined a function does this function definition do anything does this function definition execute any commands no it is just a definition when does it execute mata taqum bi tanfiz al awamir ayo when it is called so we call this a call or an invocation of the function istida invocation istida uh of the function inside the main or inside another function Now, of course we are not going to study this because you are going to write very small programs main and one function or main and two or three functions but if you have a big program you can have uh, the main is calling a function and that function is calling another function that other function is calling another function so a function can call another function that we are going to uh, use for the purpose of this class only the main calls uh, functions So here inside the main for example you have the function call the function call contains the actual parameters or we call the, we call them also the arguments the arguments uh, the arguments of the of the function call the arguments of the function call which means that my radius where does my radius go roof in ايوه where exactly inside the function we had float hmm? circle area float r so this my radius is stored in r خلاص so it no it no understands where it should be copied this my radius is copied into r as if كما لو كنا r equals my radius صح so this is how the function is called and then where does the return value go it goes into a خلاص so this is the purpose of the return statement so when we look at the return statement the return statement عندنا هنا ولا برا Uh, the return statement performs an operation and returns the value which type is float into the variable a خلاص واضح الكلام so let's look at a uh, full program where uh, what is executed here in this program only what is inside the main function was what so this is the main function it starts by printing a prompt message enter radius then defining a variable this variable will use to read user input inside my radius uh, and then it is going to call the function when this function is called this is what happens when this function is called my radius is copied inside this floating point r and then uh, the result here returned is returned into 
you turn it in the, into that float area. خلاص؟ طيب. Uh, some comments. إيه ملاحظاتكم؟ Is this program correct or does it contain a mistake? ولا مش فارقة معانا. There are two returns. Type this is a comment. There are two returns in this program. Can you see them? Yes. This is one of them. This is the other one. What is the purpose of each return? The return inside the function ends the function, terminates the function, the home and function, and returns this value in this variable. The return inside the main, main is a function. Who calls main? Uh, the operating system. Also, now, for example, if you're using Windows, then Windows is going to call main. So after main finishes, it returns back to the operating system. So uh, the operating system understands zero as no error happened. But sometimes your program crashes, right? So if your program is going to uh, crash, then uh, what should you do? Uh, return, for example, an error uh, code. So this uh, error code is returned to uh, the main. And the full screen came in. So this error code is going to be returned to the operating system. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, here, uh, the circle area, the function, is defined after the main function. So it should be uh, an error. Now your function should have been defined where? Before the main. Otherwise, when it comes here to call the function, it is not going to find it. It should be defined before the main function. So to avoid this mistake, we uh, declare a prototype or function declaration. So you just put the header here before the main function, so you don't need to define the entire function before the main. Avoid fin. Uh, void, uh, void means that we have a function that does not return anything. Alas? So here this function should return the value pi r squared. Do you know what is pi r squared? The area. Oh, the area of a uh, circle. So I'm calling the function with a name that from which you can understand what this function is doing. So if the function is void, then it will not return any values. It will exit, but will not return any values. So you should not have a void in this case. But we're going to talk about void in the next slide. But, uh, uh, also one thing here, uh, in this statement, float area equals circle area, we have done two things. We have declared a float area, which is the, the variable that is going to store the return value. And at the same time, we call the function. You can do both at the same time. Area equals circle area. So if you combine those two statements, they are combined in this uh, manner here. Float equals a circle area. خلاص. Those are my comments on this uh, code. If you don't have other comments, we can uh, proceed. Sometimes we have more than one uh, parameter. So in that case, if your function uh, definition has more than one parameter, parameter one, parameter two, then the function call should have the same number of arguments. Argument one, SF. Argument one and argument two. How are, are they matched? In the same order. So argument one gets matched to parameter one. And argument two 
gets matched to argument two. This is why the type of argument one should be the same as the type of parameter one. Is this the case here? Yes, we have an int as argument one and int as parameter one. What's the order? Yeah, they should match in number. يجب التساوي في عددهم and their types. They should match in a number and type. We have int and double. We have int and double. We have the same number and they come in the same order. خلاص. في أي ملاحظة تانية في السلايد دي؟ An expression passed when a function is called becomes the initial value of the corresponding parameter, which which means that uh, you copy argument one inside parameter one. Uh, next. Uh, void functions. This is your question, maybe. Uh, what is a void function? A void function is a function that does not return uh, any value. Not every function should have input and output. Some functions have input, but no output. But in that case, the function is useless. Uh, our function does not produce any output. So what is the use of the function? Hmm? Uh, exactly. So there is an output, but in another format. For example, this function has an output, but not returned to the main function. It is written directly to the screen, or as okay. or as Shahid uh, said, uh, a function can save output the data uh, to save in a file, for example, on your uh, hard disk. So there is an output, but uh, not uh, necessarily ليس بالضرورة returned inside the main function in a variable. You can print on the screen, you can print on a printer, save to a file. So in that case, the function return value, uh, return type is void. Void means return nothing. So void is a type. أحد الأنواع in C++. You have int, you have uh, character, you have string, or you have void. So in this case, this function returns a, a void. Now some students told me, if I don't want to return anything, then just write the function like this. Display a message and a parentheses. And this is your function. Why do you have to write void? Because if you don't write anything, if we don't write anything, what does that mean? Hmm? Nothing means int. This is the default value in C++. Alas, the default value in C++. If you don't write a return type, it assumes it is int. Uh, C++ is a very uh, compact language. Uh, some competitions, for, uh, for example, uh, some competitions ask you to write the shortest possible code. Not just a code that runs shortest possible code. So this is why they use C++, because it is a very short language. Uh, if you want to write a function that returns an int, don't write anything. C++ assume it, it is an int. So there are a lot of defaults in C++. قيم افتراضية إذا امتنعت يعني عن التفصيل يعني. If you don't specify uh, certain value, uh, the compiler is going to assume there is something missing. And I think, but I'm not sure, that uh, here also it is the same thing. Even though we don't have any parameters, I don't have a name, it assumes there is a parameter without a name that is an int. So if you don't want any input, you must write void, function name, void. As far as I remember, yeah. Because this is a void function. If I did not answer your question, please ask me after the lecture. Uh, uh, last thing today is call by reference and call by value. Uh, I think you studied this in uh, in 101. Uh, I don't like uh, 
theoretical slides السلايدات النظرية let's take an example this is the default calling scheme in C++ if you don't specify anything then all uh, parameters are called by value what does calling by value mean I'm going to write a function I will put the function definition before the main so that I can uh, refer to it uh, I can call it inside the main of course we have seen that we could have put the definition after the main but then you should have put a prototype or just the header before the main anyway this is how we wrote it here what does this function do this function takes four parameters a b c and d uh, SF, A, B, S, and uh, D. Uh, S, the third parameter, will store the sum of the two first parameters, and D, the fourth parameter, will save, will store the difference of the two first parameters. Uh, what, what this function does? Hello. Until this line, nothing happens. The function begins to execute after it is being called. So the first line, when, when I ask you to trace a program, uh, to follow a program, then you always start at the main. So this is the first line that gets executed. We have two spaces in memory. One space inside the main function and a separate, and a separate place inside the uh, function. So we have inside the sum diff function a piece of memory, and inside the main function, another piece of memory. Hmm. Uh, what does the memory inside the main contain? Contains two variables, sum and diff. What are the values? Zero and zero. Zero and zero. Hmm. Right. And then we call the function. When the function is called, we are going to move to the other uh, memory place. We call the stack. We are going to move to the uh, stack. What do we have inside the sum diff function? We have many variables. A, B, uh, S, and D. What are the values? So to know the values, you must do the correspondence. The 7 is copied into A. The 3 is copied into B. Sum is copied into S. And diff is copied into D. Correct? So A is 7. B is 3. 0 and 0. Every variable can contain only one piece of that at a time. The last piece that was assigned. And then we perform the operation A plus B. So what does S contain? 10. How about D? Uh, uh, you can use a calculator, by the way. Even though I will use very simple numbers, but it is allowed to use calculators in my exam because I don't want a student to tell me I thought that 7 minus 3 equals uh, 15. Because when I grade the exam... I have 100 exam sheets. So I look. If it contains 4, I give the mark. If it contains any number other than 4, I give 0. Then the student comes to my office, please, I didn't know that 7 minus 3 equals 4. What can I do? Okay. 7 minus 3 equals 4. Then what happens after the program terminates? <coughs> uh, after the function terminates? Well, the function is called. I go here, the function is finished. Where do I go? Here. I'm going to print sum and diff. Was both? Campbell values, see out. 10. 10 and uh, 4. But I wrote here in the comments 0 and 0. هتصدقوني ولا تصدقوا نفسكم؟ ايه اللي حصل ده؟ حتى الكمبيوتر معترض. Is it 10 and 4 or 0 and 0 or another value? 
مع التعليم أكثر سؤال كنت بكره أذكر السبب مع التعليم يعني الوزير وهني موجود أساس ما يأثر على قيمة الموجة الطرح والجلب هو الرقم الوحيد اللي ما يأثر أنت ما صفرت أنت عندك سام زيرو والجلب زيرو وانت عايز تقول سمعت خلاص نوع الفانكشن فويد فما عندنا ريتيرن فرجعنا له ها هو بيقول فانكشن از فويد فانكشن سو ات داز نوت ريتيرن اني ثينج سو هاو ديل ذا 10 اند 4 كم باك تو سم اند اف ات از اونلي وان واي از اي سيد كولينج باي فاليو مينز وي ار كوبينج وي كوبي 7 انتو اي وي كوبي 3 انتو بي كوبي سم انتو اس اند كوبي اف انتو دي But the opposite direction is not correct. We, we did not copy anything back from S and D to some and D. Type. Ali. Ali told us because there is no return. Type. Can you solve this problem with a return? Hatta lo kan fi return. Can you solve this problem? Return S and D. Can you return two values? Can a function return two values? How? What is the maximum number of values you can return on? One. This is what we said in the function definition. Where is the function definition? Rahat fain. Any function definition can only contain one return statement. Sah? Oh. Only one type and one return. How can you return more than one value? ما احنا عارفين بقى مش عارفين ولا ايه؟ دي ريتيرن فويد اني فانكشن كان ريتيرن زيرو فاليوز اللي هي فويد اور وان فاليو اللي هي ريتيرن بس ات كانوت ريتيرن مور ذان وان نمبر هاو كان يو ريتيرن مور ذان وان نمبر باي يوزنج ريفرنس فاريبلز نوت باي يوزنج ذا ريتيرن سو ذيس فانكشن كان يو سي ذا ديفرنس؟ ذيس از وات وي هاف هير وي اونلي هاف ان امبرسنت هير ذا ريفرنس سيمبل In the reference symbol. So by using the reference symbol, it is a two-way communication between the calling uh, function and the called function. But we did not use an ampersand here with the A and B. So it's one way. For A and B is one way. Seven is copied inside A, and three is copied inside. B, Ross. But for S and D, those are reference. So this is different. Can you see the difference? Here it was a not reference. So it is copied by value, one way only. But here it is calling by reference. We use the ampersand symbol. So uh, it works both ways. So now what is the output of this program? Now the output of this program is correct. 10 and 4. Uh, why? Because I have... Uh, reference variables. Reference variables are like pointers. They, they are constant pointers. They are actually pointers, but constant pointers that point back to the uh, parameter in the calling function. So this is what we call the argument, and this is the parameter. It points back to the uh, argument. So the change that happened inside the function is reflected in sum. Because, as I said, The memory is split into two uh, parts in the stack. One part that saves the variables inside the main, the sum, and the diff. And another one that has the A, B, S, and D. What happens to A, B, S, and D when the function returns, when the function finishes? When the function finishes, uh, this is lost. All this data is lost. So the values that we computed are lost and we return back to the main. We cannot find them. So this is why we use reference variables. So reference variables, the S points back to sum, the D points back to diff. When the values are computed, they are stored in sum and diff. They are actually stored S. To shear ila sum what d to shear ila diff. So the results are stored in those variables. And then the s and d inside the main function are destroyed, they are lost, and the function uh, returns.
خلاص فهمنا الكلام ده بس ايه ده 14 فين 14 دي صفحه فاضيه خدعتكم خلاص ذيس از ذا اند اوف تو ذيس كلاس شكرا